Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. Still chilly here in the mornings in Portland, Oregon in mid-April. Since I'm sitting up here having my coffee and warming my toes, I figured I would show you all some things that are right next to me here in the window seat that I am getting going in the garden because there are two plants that I'm really excited about. One I have grown for years and really enjoy and the other one is new to me. So let me hop up here and show you. Here you can see our window seat is positioned to get great full sun. So I often start plants here, which means we can't sit here, but um, I'm looking forward to getting my greenhouse finished so that I don't have to use my dad's greenhouse and um, my sunroom and my window seat to start all my plants. I only have two things going here right now. The first one is Physalis peruviana, which is the Cape gooseberry. And I'm trying a new variety of this this year. I grow this every year. It is my favorite annual fruit because it is one unusual, difficult to source here at grocery stores, and it grows so easily, so well, and it is a lovely plant with a delicious fruit. It is related to tomatillos and tomatoes. It is a nightshade. I'm trying a new variety from Fedco Seeds, Ambrosia. I haven't grown this one before, so looking forward to seeing how it does. This plant doesn't need staking. It's very upright and just a lovely, beautiful plant. So you can see here, they just have the cotyledons out and there are no true leaves yet. I probably started these about three weeks late, but because Physalis produces way into um, October, I can get it going late and be a little bit lazy and it will still catch up and produce well, unlike maybe a tomato. Normally I would start this when I start my tomatoes, but I got going late, it'll catch up, it's okay. Now, here's the plant I'm really excited about. They don't look very exciting though. These are, from Oikos Tree Crops because it was the only place I was able to source these after years of looking. The few nurseries that had them are always out of stock. Can't find them anywhere locally. And so I was really excited about these sad little looking plants. These are the perennial broccoli that I ordered. Now they're not a true broccoli. The other name for them is Turkish Rocket. And I was really disappointed when these came in the mail, they were all stacked up in the box like this and crushing each other. So what I found is they each had two plants in each pot and each had one set of seed leaves and one set of true leaves and all of the true leaves were crushed. But I've had them in the windowsill here by the wood stove where it's warm. And you can see I'm getting new true leaves. Perennial broccoli, also known as Turkish rocket, is Bunius orientalis. It is actually not a true broccoli but it produces broccoli-like florets that um, are small, much more like a broccoli rob, and you can pick dozens of them off one plant. It is grown because it is such a hardy, disease-resistant, resilient perennial food crop. Now, it has a cabbage-like flavor, but it lacks, well, when I've enjoyed it, it's lacked the bitterness of some of the cabbage varieties. Now, the shoots, the stems, the leaves, and the florets are all edible. As the season goes on and the leaves mature, they become too fibrous to really enjoy. So this plant grows in zones four through eight and is considered invasive in some places. So just check where you are to make sure it's legal to grow it. And it is difficult to propagate from cuttings. So it can be a hard plant to source, but once established, it has a deep taproot, is considered a dynamic accumulator, although I personally need to do some research on that because I've just heard it spoken of as a dy dynamic accumulator, but I um, haven't seen any data. It thrives and produces well in a variety of soil types. It is a great companion plant in a fruit guild. So Turkish Rocket is a plant that I'm excited to grow. I've eaten it a number of times and knew that I liked it enough to want to grow it and put it in my garden. I am focused more on the fact that it is a perennial broccoli substitute that is not bothered by green aphids or the cabbage loper butterfly, which is a huge problem here and why I only grow annual broccolis in the winter when the butterflies are not out. So I'm looking forward to having broccoli-like florets without having to use floating row covers and without having to deal with cabbage lopers. So these are doing really well. They're catching up, I'm hopeful for them. And the reason I'm happy, even though I was not expecting a six inch plant um, in a six inch pot to be really tiny and only have one set of true leaves, they are surviving. 
This is a plant that's hard to source. I'm gonna get them thriving and make it work. I'm not gonna put them out in the garden until they are larger, however. I hope you will consider growing some Cape gooseberries in your garden and try the Turkish rocket if you're able to find it. I am going to be definitely following this plant in the garden and give you updates regularly once it's potted out. Now I'm gonna go out and do some yard work. It's just stunning. I'm gonna do my morning stroll of the garden, check out how everything is going, and I am going to be making some videos, giving you all updates on my other fruit guilds because I got so much feedback that folks wanna know the composition of all my fruit guilds in my food forest. So I will be doing that for you all. Um, piece by piece um, and giving updates on those as the year progresses. But for now, that's a look at my perennial broccoli slash Turkish rocket and Physalis peruviana going here in my window seat. Just little tiny things that are going to hopefully make a big difference in adding diversity and resiliency to my food supply. Thanks.